just going to record this. And uh, we are speaking from chapter 10. Chapter 10, we are hearing about all these amazing qualities that Krishna says that he is the one who's created these qualities. And we were reading in, like we were discussing a bit in detail about them. Uh, now I lost the, okay, let me find it. Yes, yes. Yeah, we are on this one. So would anyone be able to read? We are going to read about fame. Yes, yes. If no, then I'll read. Okay. Yasha's fame should be according to Lord Chaitanya, who said that a man is famous when he's known as a great devotee. That is real fame. If one has become a great man in Krishna consciousness and it is known, then he is truly famous. One who does not have such fame is infamous. So Krishna saying fame is also created by him and who is actually famous? What is actually fame? So Prabhupada here is quoting Lord Chaitanya. You know, we know a lot of famous people. Now if it's social media, it's even more. We can hear about the famous people or we can see what they are doing. But who is really famous? Lord Chaitanya is saying one who is known as a great devotee of the Lord. You know that can you, can, does anyone have any example of a great devotee, really famous? Till today, we are speaking about them. You know, like for example, Arjuna. Here we are hearing Bhagavad Gita. Krishna spoke to Arjuna. Happened 5,000 years ago. But till today, we are singing about uh, Bhagavad Gita, we are hearing about Arjun, the Pandavas. They are famous as Krishna's devotees. Prahlad Maharaj. Recently, we have been reading in Srimad Bhagavatam about Prahlad Maharaj. Happened millions of years ago, but so famous that till today we are trying to understand his teachings. Dhruva Maharaj. So really, you know, we can see that how one is actually famous when one is known as a great devotee of the Lord. So all these qualities are manifest throughout the universe in human society and in the society of the demigods. There are many forms of humanity on other planets and these qualities are there. So we may think, oh, there is life only on earth, but there is life even on other planets. There are living entities even on other planets. And there are these qualities even in the society of demigods. You know, demigods also, for example, just now we were speaking of fame. So Lord Indra, Lord Chandra, Lord Ganesh, really famous, right? <clears throat> so now for one who wants to advance in Krishna consciousness, Krishna creates all these qualities, but the person develops them himself from within. One who engages in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord develops all the good qualities as arranged by the Supreme Lord. So it means all these good qualities are there in each and every one of us. But we need to develop them. We need to cultivate the good qualities. You know, it is said that uh, in Kalyuk, the demons used to stay on another planet, completely another planet. We see like how Hiranyakashipu, he was living on another planet. Then came Treta Yoga, where the demons were staying in another country. Like we see Lord Ram and then Ravan. Ravan was in another country. He was in Lanka. Then came Dwapar Yoga. The demon was staying in the same family. We see Arjun and Duryodhan, cousins, same family. In Kalyug, where does the demon stay? Where does the divine quality stay? Both are in us. We have both the divine and the demoniac qualities in us. But what we need to do is we need to cultivate the divine qualities, the good qualities, and we need to let go or uproot of the demoniac qualities. So when we engage in devotional service, then it um, gets easier to cultivate these qualities. Bhagavatam says that one who is a devotee of the Lord has all the good qualities of the demigods. All these qualities 
develop these good qualities, develop in the devotee. Why? Because he's following in the footsteps of a person who has all the good qualities. For example, Prahlad Maharaj. If we hear his teachings and if we follow his teachings, then for sure we will also cultivate all the good qualities that he has. Not imitation, we can't imitate, but we can surely follow in the footsteps, follow the instructions. So of whatever we find, good or bad, the origin is Krishna. Nothing can manifest itself in this material world which is not in Krishna. So someone will say, why will God create bad? But well, because God is unlimited. Everything exists in God. It depends on how we are using it. For example, anger. Anger is not good at all. You know, it creates so much, so much destruction. But the same anger, if it can be used in Krishna's service, then it's good. Like Hanuman, he used anger in Krishna's service. He burnt up Lanka. Or Arjuna, he's using his anger to fight the Kurukshetra war in Krishna's service. So anything and everything that we are seeing and that we can't see, all is created by Krishna. That is knowledge. Although we know that things are differently situated, we should realize that everything flows from Krishna. So because we as all the all the acharyas, they are telling us Krishna is the cause of all causes. Krishna is the origin. He sarva karana karanam. Uh, so nothing can exist if it is not created by Krishna. If we think something exists and has no relation with Krishna, that is Maya. Because anything and everything has a relationship with Krishna. Any questions or comments? Anything to add? No. Then we'll go on to the next verse, text 6. Does anyone want to read? Krishna item. Yeah, please, Sonia. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharsya Sapta Purve Katwaro Manavas Tatha Madhava Manasa Jata Yesam Loka Imaha Praja Translation The seven great sages and before them the four other great sages and the Manus Prognators of mankind came from me and born from my mind, and all the living beings populating the various planets descend from them. Purport: The Lord is giving a genealogical synopsis of the universal population. Brahma is the original crea creator, born out of the energy of the Supreme Lord, who is known as Hiranya Garba. And from the Brahma, all the seven great sages, and before them, four other great sages named Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana, and San, Sanat Kumara and the 14 Manus are manifested. All these 25 great sages are known as the patriarchy of the living entities all over the universe. There are innumerable universes and innumerable planets within each universe and each planet is full of population of different varieties. All of them are born of these 25 patriarchies, Brahma underwent penance for 1,000 years of the demigod before he realized by the grace of Krishna how to create. Then from Brahma came Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana and Sanat Kumara, then Rudra and then the seven sages. And in this way, all the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas are born <clears throat> out of the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahma is known as Pitamaha, the grandfather, and Krishna is known as pra, Prapitamaha, the father of the grandfather. The, that is stated in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, 11.39. Okay. So Krishna is here. Krishna is saying here the Saptarishis, you know, the seven great sages. 
he's created them. Then he's saying the four Kumaras. There he's creating them, the Manus. There are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. He's saying they're all coming from me. So each and every living entity is coming from Krishna. You know how if those of us who have Indian passport, they write down name of father at the back of the passport, name of father, name of mother. So like this, if we do a research work, who's my father's father, father's father, father's father, like that, we are going to come up to Lord Brahma. Ultimately, we have to if we do so much research work because he's the first created being in the universe. All living entities are coming after him in the inside this universe. And then what does Lord Brahma say? Brahma says, Govindam Adi Purusham Tam Aham Bajami. Go Lord Brahma is telling us who is his father. That is Govinda, Lord Krishna. He's saying, Krishna, you are my seed giving father. <clears throat> so Krishna is the seed giving father of everyone. Each and every living entity. We are all part and parcel of God. Each of us is part and parcel of Krishna. In Bhagavatam, the creation is explained to a more in a more detailed way, spe specifically in the second and third cantos of Bhagavatam, that how Mahavishnu, he's lying down in the Karana ocean, he glances at the material energy, with his breathing out, all these universes are coming from his pores of his body. Then he's entering into every universe as Garbodakshai Vishnu. He's lying on the Garbodaka ocean. And from the navel of this Garbodakshai Vishnu comes a lotus flower. And Lord Brahma is created then. Lord Brahma sits on this lotus flower. Then Lord Brahma, he does penance for thousand years of the demigods because Lord Brahma he was alone that time there was nothing else in the universe everything is was very dark he didn't know what to do he heard the word tapa penance and he did penance for 1000 years of demigods then he got the knowledge of how to create Krishna spoke the Vedas to Brahma within his heart tene Brahma hridaya ya adi kavaye and then Brahma got the knowledge of how to create. So first he created the four Kumaras. Sanak, Sananda, Sanatan and Sanat Kumar. So he told them, you know, that my service is to populate the universe. So now you go and populate the universe. And they were like, oh, my dear father, we are sorry. They were devotees, you know. So they said, we don't want to get involved in all this. Uh, we just want to continue with our devotional service. We want to continue to remain brahmacharis. We don't want to have any children. Brahma got upset because it's his service to populate the universe. Otherwise, how will we living entities get different bodies? Brahmanji does not create the soul. But he, the, the, the ingredients are all created by Krishna. Earth, water, air, fire, ether. All the ingredients are created by Krishna and we the living entities are put inside the universe by Krishna Lord Brahma gives shape just like a potter he does not create the earth the earth is there, the water is there he combines it and gives shape makes shape different pots so Lord Brahma ingredients are given to him by Krishna and Lord Brahma gives shape to different planets, places them in different ways puts us living entities in different planets and different bodies, depending where we have to go. That's his service. Our Lord Brahma of this universe currently, he is a devotee of the Lord. He's a pure devotee. He's one of the Mahajans. So anyway, so then the Fokumaras told him, oh, we, I'm sorry, we can't. We can't help you in this service. So he got upset and from the middle of his eyebrows came Rudra. Rudra is an expansion of Lord Shiva. That's how Lord Shiva is also a son of Brahma. So they're all brothers, the four Kumaras, Lord Shiva. And then also Narad Muni. Narad Muni is Brahma's son also. Anyway, then he created Daksha. He created the seven rishis, you know, the progenitors of the 
of the universe are also created by Brahma, like Daksh. Daksh is one of the progenitors. The seven greatest sages like Brigu, Brigu Muni, and uh, I forget all their names. But anyway, these are great personalities. They have the, they're living on the higher planets. And they're all coming from Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma is coming from Krishna. So we have to understand Krishna is the origin, cause of all causes. So Lord Brahma is known as Pitamaha and Krishna is known as Prapitamaha. Grandfather of the grandfather. So we want, if we want, we can do this research work, you know, who's my father, father's father, father's father, like that. We go generations and generations back and we have to come to Lord Brahma because that's how the creation has happened. And Lord Brahma is telling us who, who's the real father and that is Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 14 that I am the seed giving father. He's also saying it. Also, the great devotees are saying it. The scriptures are saying it. Sarva karana, karana. As we say, right? We are all children of God. So, this is how. Any questions or comments? No, all good. Okay. So, let's go on to the next one then. Itam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo veti tatavata so vikalpana yogena yujate natra samsaya. Translation One who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this, there is no doubt. Purport The highest summit of spiritual perfection is knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unless one is firmly convinced of the different opulences of the Supreme Lord, he cannot engage in devotional service. Generally, people know that God is great, but they do not know in detail how God is great. Here are the details. If one knows factually how God is great, then naturally he becomes a surrendered soul and engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord. When one factually knows the opulences of the Supreme, there is no alternative but to surrender to him. This factual knowledge can be known from the descriptions in Shrimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and similar literatures. In the administration of this universe, there are many demigods distributed throughout the planetary system and the chief of them are Brahma, Lord Shiva and four great Kumaras and the other patriarchs. There are many forefathers of the population of the universe and all of them are born of the Supreme Lord Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the original forefather of all forefathers. There are some of the opulences of the Supreme Lord. When one is firmly convinced of them, he accepts Krishna with great faith and without any doubt, and he engages in devotional service. All this particular knowledge is required in order to increase one's interest in the loving devotional service of the Lord. One should not neglect to understand fully how great Krishna is, and for by knowing the greatness of Krishna, one will be able to be fixed in sincere devotional service. So what happens, see, when we know of a great person, you know, we know somebody um, who's great in a field, then we automatically, we want to hear from them. We want to know what they're doing, how they're doing. We automatically submit to them. It's a natural tendency. We somebody we see somebody who's great. We want to follow them or we want to take instruction for them. We surrender to them. We listen to them. So now the greatest person is God. Are we always saying God is great. So we have to understand. Of course, we cannot understand fully because God is unlimited. But at least to the degree that we can, we try to understand how great is he? What is his position? What are some of his activities? Then we can naturally surrender to him. It becomes natural. You know, if one can understand how great God is, then it becomes automatic. Oh, wow, he's so great. He's so powerful. He's not same like me. I'm not same like him. I'm insignificant compared to him. Automatically, that realization will come. 
otherwise till the time we think okay god and me same same maybe maybe he's a little powerful than me maybe he can do a little bit more than me you know but if we in fact factually prabhupada is using the word fact what is the fact what is god's position actually then we will automatically surrender to him it is it's a very natural to so if we can know his vibhutis his opulences some of his opulences we can get some idea and then when one surrenders to krishna then one engages in bhakti devotional service so because prabhupada say we can understand how god how great is god from shrimad bhagavatam from bhagavad gita you know, we can imagine these things so uh, the great demigods of the universe we just mentioned in the previous verse lord brahma lord shiva they are all coming from krishna the 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 prajapati is daksh daksh is so powerful he is also coming from krishna and uh, so every, everyone krishna is the original origin of all origins cause of all causes sarva karana karanam so by hearing about krishna by hearing his opulences then we may be naturally inclined to engage in devotional service okay this eighth is very quoted uh, very widely quoted verse shri prabhupada also quoted this many times the one which we are about to read aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava saman vitah translation i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds everything emanates from me the wise who perfectly knows this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts purport a lone scholar who has studied the vedas perfectly and has information from authorities like lord chaitanya and who know how to apply these teachings can understand that krishna is the origin of everything in both the material and spiritual worlds and because he knows this perfectly he becomes firmly fixed in devotional service of the supreme lord he can never be deviated by any amount of nonsensical commentaries or by fools All Vedic literature agrees that Krishna is the source of Brahma, Shiva, and all other demi gods. In the Adharv Veda, Gopala Tapni Upanishad, one point twenty-four, it is said, "Yo Brahmanam Vida Vida Dhati Purvam Yo Ve Vedam Vedam Scha Gapayati Sama Krishna." It was Krishna who, in the beginning, instructed Brahma and in Vedic knowledge, and who. disseminated vedic knowledge in the past then again the narayan upanishad one says atha purusho hav vai narayano kamyate praja shrija yati then the supreme personality narayan desired to create living entities the upanishad continues narayana brahma jayate narayana praja pati praja yate narayana indra jayate narayana तो वसावो जयंते नारायण एकादशा रुद्र जयंते नारायण द्वादशादित फ्रॉम नारायण ब्रह्मा इज बॉर्न एंड फ्रॉम नारायण द पैट्रियार्क्स आर आल्सो बॉर्न फ्रॉम नारायण इंद्रा इज बॉर्न एंड फ्रॉम नारायण द एट वासुज आर बॉर्न फ्रॉम नारायण द इलेवन रुद्रास आर बॉर्न एंड फ्रॉम नारायण द ट्वेल्व आदित्यास आर बॉर्न दिस नारायण इज एन एक्सपेंशन ऑफ कृष्णा It is said in the same way that Brahmanyo Devaki Putra, the son of Devaki Krishna, is the supreme personality. Narayana Upanishad four. Then it is said, Ikko Vya Narayana Asin Na Brahma Nasano Napo Nagni Sumyo Neme Dwes Aprathvi Na Naksatrani Na Surya. in the beginning of the creation there was only the supreme personality narayana there was no brahma no shiva no water no fire no moon no heaven and earth no stars in the sky no sun mahapnishad 
in the maha upanishad it is also said the lord shiva was born from forehead of the supreme lord does the veda say that it is a supreme lord the creator of brahma and shiva who is to be worshiped in the moksha dharma section of the mahabharata krishna also says prajapatin cha rudram chape aham iva sarjami va tohi mam na vijanati vajanito mama maya vimohito the patriarchs shiva and others are created by me though they do not know that they are created by me because they are deluded by my illusionary energy in the varaha purana it is also said narayana paro devas tasmach jatas chatur mukha tasmad rudro bhavat deva sa cha sarva gyatam gata Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead, and from him Brahma was born, and from whom Shiva was born. Lord Krishna is the source of all generations, and he is called the most efficient cause of everything. He says, "Because everything is born of me, I am the original source of all. Everything is under me, and no one is above me. There is no supreme controller other than Krishna. One who understands Krishna in such a way from a bona fide spiritual master with reference from Vedic literature engages all his energy in the Krishna consciousness and becomes a truly learned man. In comparison to him, all others who do not know Krishna properly are but fools. Only a fool would consider Krishna to be an ordinary god man. a krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools he should avoid all unauthorized authorized authorized unauthorized i don't know the word is not coming out okay Un unauthorized unauthorized yeah i don't know it was not coming out sorry he should avoid all unauthorized commentaries and interpretations on bhagavad gita and proceed in krishna consciousness with determination and firmness hmm. so yeah krishna no thank you Krishna, what is he saying? He's saying I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So someone may say, "Oh, is Krishna boasting?" We always say, "Don't boast." Oh, I made this. I did this. We have said, "Don't do this. Don't do this." Well, why we are why have we said, "Don't boast"? Because we are very tiny part in actually doing something. Krishna speaks in the Bhagavad Gita later that there are five factors involved. You know, the endeavor, the senses, the field of activities, the soul, of course, we, and the super soul. The sanction of the supreme Lord is needed for us to do something. So that's why we are said, don't boast. But when Krishna is saying this, he's not boasting. He's not speaking out of pride. He's just merely stating the fact. Otherwise, how will we know? How will we know who is the creator? I don't know if you all have ever wondered, you know, before or at any time, who who has created this material world? Who is the one who's behind it? It's Krishna, and who's created the spiritual world? It's Krishna, and we living entities, we are part and parcel of Krishna. So Krishna is saying, one who can actually understand this is wise. One who can understand that Krishna is the cause of all causes. Krishna is the creator of the material world. Krishna is the creator of the spiritual world. That everything is coming from Krishna. One who can understand this, that person is wise, and such a person engages in bhakti, worships Krishna with love. with devotion and that is what is needed vedic study is meant for this purpose vedascha sarva aham eva vedya because one may be a great scholar in vedas but not understand the meaning of the vedas by all the vedas we have to come to understand krishna krishna himself is saying this in the bhagavad gita and so that's why we need to hear the scriptures hear the scriptures from the devotees because they are telling us for example we hear uh, lord shiva's beautiful prayers in shrimad bhagavatam 
and how in every prayer of his, he's saying that one should worship Krishna, that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. The prayers are, are spoken by Lord Brahma, by Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruv Maharaj, all the great personalities are saying, Krishna is God. There's no one greater than or equal to God. And that we need to engage in service of Krishna. That is, uh, that is actually what is needed. It's a sign of intelligence. Bhagavatam says those who are intelligent and Kalyug will worship Krishna who comes as Lord Chaitanya by the Sankirtana movement. So, of course, there are many commentaries, there are many um, misinterpretations of the Bhagavad Gita, but we are all encouraged to hear Bhagavad Gita from the devotees, uh, to, to have the real knowledge as Krishna spoke it, as Arjuna understood it. And here in this purport, Srila Prabhupada is giving us so much evidence to what Krishna is saying that he is the cause of all causes, that he's the source of material world, spiritual world. He's speaking, he's giving us so much evidence of what Lord Brahma is saying, what the Narayan, Pura, Narayan Upanishad is saying, that Lord Narayan, he's the creator, he's even the creator of Brahma. He's even the creator of Lord Shiva. You know, he's even the creator of the Prajapatis. He's the creator. Narayan is the creator of Indra. Narayan is the creator of Vasus. Narayan is the creator of the Rudras. Narayan is the creator of Adityas. And who is this Narayan? Narayan is an expansion of Krishna. Narayan is coming from Krishna. Krishna expands as Narayan. So this is the Narayan Upanishad. The Veda is also saying, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Mahapanishad is saying that Lord Shiva is coming from the Supreme Lord. So Mahabharat, Moksha Dharma, it says that Krishna is saying that the Prajap the patriarchs, Lord Shiva, they're all created by me. Varaha Purana. So there's so much evidence that Krishna is God. He's the cause of all causes. Uh, so if we can try to understand this, that there is no one greater than Krishna, there is no one equal to Krishna. So we may say, but why? Why there is no one equal to Krishna? Why is there no one greater than Krishna? How can it be? You know, because we feel we are, we, you know, there's always somebody controlling us. You know, there's somebody always equal to us. So we are like, how can it be that Krishna has no create, no controller, there's no one equal to him. Well, he doesn't because he's God. That's the meaning of God. No one is greater than him. No one is equal to him. Yeah. Asamordva, that is Krishna's position. That is the meaning of God. Most powerful. Most powerful. We may say, well, why this one is not more powerful than Krishna? Why that one is not more powerful than Krishna? Because Krishna is God, and that's a fact. And all the scriptures are telling us this. And all the authorities in devotional service are telling us this. And that's the reason we need to hear from the authority. Just like we want to become a doctor, we go to a proper, properly authorized medical school, study, train under the, the teachers who are licensed to teach, get a degree which is recognized by the medical authorities and practice, become a great doctor. We, don't, we can't just become a doctor hearing from the internet or from here or there. So if you actually want to understand about God, we need to hear from the devotees who understand God. Is that okay? Yeah. Any comments or questions? Everything clear. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then we'll stop here for today. Oh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki, Jai Shla Prabhupada ki, Jai